Hi, I'm Melissa from SoGo Survey, and I'm here to connect with you about expectations. In short, if you're not managing expectations, you might not be managing without them either. Let's take a look. It's fair to say that not too many people love waiting, but it helps if you know what you're waiting for, how long you might be waiting, and basically what to expect. We know that there's waiting built into a lot of processes, whether you're waiting for a delivery, waiting for someone, this dog, waiting for somebody to come home, of course. We know that that's built into a lot of processes, and we need to be able to make sure that we can manage expectations. One example of an organization that, uh, or an industry in fact really, that is doing a great job in this area is shipping. If you're sending a package, we now know that you can track it, and you can find a lot of detailed information, and you'll also be able to track it if you're waiting for a package. So that's really nice, you can, almost, you can see, plot the journey across uh, whatever area, the points between, of course, to make sure you're making progress and getting it done. If you are uh, unfortunate enough to be uh, beset by a weather event or something like that that might delay your package, um, you can be notified about that right away too. So the post office, a lot of private shipping companies as well, they're taking away that sort of doubt or that concern about what's happening once I send something out there. You know, you're playing a waiting game, of course. You're sending it out and you're hoping that it arrives. But when we find that we have no surprises, we're not gonna know about pretty much everything along the way, it means that we have many, many fewer worries. So that's a great example of managing expectations, and keeping everyone informed along the way. Here's a bad example. This is based on personal experience, as you might be able to guess. Um, think about this, does it help if you're early for a doctor's appointment? We, we think yes, but maybe not. So thinking about your own personal expectations. Um, do the number of chairs correspond to the number of offered appointments? If you've been in a small waiting room that had a lot of chairs or a large waiting room that had a few chairs, um, it really sort of makes you start to think about what kind of quota management more or less has been applied and is there a logic uh, in terms of correspondence. And the last one there too, is it even possible that all of the appointments that were offered correspond to the available minutes in the day too? So think about the expectations that are happening even before someone walks into this place. And I can tell you, this is certainly based on uh, an experience in which I spent a lot of time waiting in a waiting room. So this is, a, this is where bad turns to ugly. When you start getting into this situation, you have to second guess, what, are, what am I even doing in this situation? Um, is this a really super popular doctor? Is it really a great service that this doctor is providing? Um, is it just a really critically important uh, service that this person is? Maybe it's the only specialist, for example. And you start to wonder, should the staff be adding more chairs or more doctors? Um, you know, this is certainly an unfortunate situation. And being able to, you know, maintain sort of the, the respect for your patients to say, you know, we can't get you in, but we can get you in tomorrow. Or if saying that we can get you in today, you'll actually be able to see someone. It was in this specific experience and uh, the receptionist kept saying, oh, the doctor will be with you in a few minutes. The doctor will be with you in a few minutes. And it became increasingly clear that the doctor, who's a wonderful doctor, was not going to be with any of us in just a few minutes. So definitely managing that expectation, keeping the frustration low. In this case, you have a pretty captive audience. You're going to see a specialist, uh, might be the only one in the region, something like that too. So patience, uh, patience is a virtue, of course, too. But when you treat your patients with respect, part of that requires managing expectations. Um, of course, we like to look at all of these things from the survey point of view as well, too. So when you're managing expectations within a survey, just keep in mind, you want to be able to make sure you're communicating as clearly as possible. When's it going out? Who's it coming from? What's the purpose? What's going to happen with all of the data? So that communication is really, really important in all elements of managing communication or managing expectations. Getting specific take a look at how long it might take for someone to, um, rather than just saying, oh, it'll just take you a few minutes, maybe give a more precise calculation. You can find this right within our platform now too, but you can also test it yourself or have others test before you launch. And then follow up as well too. What happens next? You've got a nice thank you message once people submit the survey, the form, whatever it is, but also sending them an instant message right away. So an instant alerts, an instant thank you, rules and alerts message based on someone on your team. They should know what to do right away too. There's a lot of good opportunities here for follow-up. So before, during, and after, managing those expectations consistently throughout the process can make a huge difference. If you're using other strategies to manage expectations or somehow you don't have to and you're just managing without it, managing expectations, we'd love to hear from you. So continue the conversation with us online and we'll love to look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks so much for joining. We look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, connect with us on social media at SoGo Survey or visit our website, sogosurvey.com. See you next time.